Hey, so I'm just gonna, uh, shoot, uh, explain the, the final build for the kitty feeder. There's a boy cat! Boy cat! He started to harangue the, the new kitty feeder when he wants food, which is good. You're learning, boy cat. Yes. So, okay, so inside of the box here, um, I have all the mechanicals and stuff hidden. Um, uh, I should... I want to start by saying, I guess, that uh, uh, about maybe a third of the original concept um, uh, made it into the final product. There was a lot of learning that went on with this project, so um, there's a lot of things that I would change, and, and I'll talk about those things at the end, um, uh, but it pretty much functions. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, as far as what's inside the box, uh, there's an Arduino uh, Uno uh, that I got off of Amazon, um, as usual. I buy usually all my components and things off of Amazon. So there's an Arduino Uno, and there is a uh, limited rotation uh, servo. Um, I got the the uh, high torque model, um, just because I figured why not. Um, it turned out that it wasn't high enough torque or or what quite what I wanted, but um, I was kind of following similar builds I saw on the internet. So anyway, so there's a limited rotation servo, which means that it will only rotate through 0 and 180 degrees. Um, and then to connect the various components together, um, I had to use a uh, breadboard. So. Um, the only external control on this thing uh, is this arcade button, um, which lights up. And I, I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really try too hard to make it light up. There's you have to apply some kind of voltage across the terminals, and I just didn't really look into it too much because I didn't really care to make it light up. But anyway, so what the, that button does is it'll it'll initiate the um, the feeding sequence, the feeding program, uh, each time you depress the button. Uh, normally, the the program runs on a set interval uh, that you that you write into the code. Um, and I will attach a link to the video to um, the original instructable that I found um, that has all of the necessary code and all the steps that I basically follow. The big difference is that nobody that I could really find anyway uh, really had sort of the build quality. Everybody makes these automatic pet food feeders but then and they do a really neat job with all the coding and everything but then they just like make all the mechanicals out of like you know, toilet paper tubes and like broken CDs. And, you know, I didn't want a big pile of cardboard tubes and broken CDs sitting in the corner of my kitchen. I wanted something a little bit nicer. And I don't know, I would argue this is a little bit nicer, but again, there's things that I would change. So that's what's inside the, inside the box. The only thing you can really see from the exterior besides the button is just the part where you uh, put in the cat food. Um, so inside here, there's like um, two boards that run down in a V like this so that it funnels the cat food down to a common point here. And then at this location, there is a kind of like a, a small uh, metal food can that I cut in half and that's attached to the servo and it rotates that can and it acts like a gate. And so it opens, lets food through, and then closes. Um, and then the food comes out through that hole and then hits this board, which is kind of like a, like a sluice. And, um, and then the food, you know, falls through the sluice and into the pan. So mechanically pretty simple. Um, I really wanted to, or I guess I'll talk about what, what all I would change. So first of all, I wouldn't use a limited rotation servo because um, 
uh, they are not really designed for this purpose too much and there's a there's a quality to them that when you uh, when like any little thing obstructs their movement like say a, like a like a little piece of kibble gets stuck between the edge of the can and and the side of the structure there and if it just I mean it prevents it from closing even like you know less than a tenth of an inch like a hundredth of an inch or something it'll just it'll kind of buzz and like try to get back to the original set location and it's just it's loud and it's annoying and it sounds broken um you know and it would probably just light it all on fire if you if you let it continue to buzz you know so that's like i would use something else i would use some kind of heftier thing that if a crunchy got in its way it would just like crush the crunchy um and not be affected by it like it just wouldn't even see the crunchy um i'm happy with how the coating turned out like i'm really happy with the coating aspect of the project that was fun um it was fun troubleshooting that stuff and getting the opportunity to write uh some code uh, i haven't done that for a while um i would change i would change the way that i constructed the box i would make it i would just dimension it differently to be able to i don't know maybe slide behind the washing machine over here because it's like we have this huge thing now in the kitchen um yeah there's some there's some other minor things um like just the the way that i configured the the diagonal pieces inside here um it turns out that the geometry of the of the of the kibble actually matters quite a lot um this kind of like three-dimensional sort of like um piece of the crunchy here oops yeah that's another thing so the crunchy is like this shape and it tends to interlock amongst itself like really really well and so what will happen and you can see it a little bit here like a depression will form in the center where the little uh gate is and and the food will just it'll cease to be in contact with the gate so food won't come out anymore but you'll have this like you know gigantic like caldera of kitty crunchies and it's just like not going anywhere because the those shapes tend to interlock really well so i think when we buy cat food again i'm gonna buy some round kibble and i feel like that'll that'll solve some of my problems um that i have that i have with the feeder um but yeah so far I, I think we'll be doing another iteration of the feeder um i mean this is kind of a fun project so i don't feel too terrible about it it's been a fun exercise and just the whole design and like test and evaluation process um of you know building a little a little project like this so this boy can he's like i thought i heard crunches come out i heard it um here i will press the button to make crunches come out or hope i can't hear okay so i'm gonna press the button and that's pretty much what happens so there he is picking up okay thanks bye